Alan Holzman, and this is Confessions of an SEO. So let's dig in and get started. Welcome to episode 44 of Confessions of an SEO in 2024. I have likely by the time you hear this gotten back from a weekend trip with my brother where we go and visit where our mom grew up, where he was born, and do some serious historical sightseeing. And that's going to likely be a trip back to Mount Vernon. Now, I've been there a couple of times, and I always learn something new every time I go. For instance, did you know that the key to the Bastille is at Mount Vernon? You know, Lafayette was given the key by the angry mob back when France was done with their monarchy. And he shipped all one pound, three ounces of it to uh, George Washington. Eventually, it made its way to him. And by all accounts, he held it in great um, symbolic importance. The last time I saw it, it was in a box frame on the left wall at the stairs, in case anybody's looking for it. All right. So I recorded what you're about to hear um, as uh, there are two new tests in the series to answer the question, does the helpful content system or rules, whatever you want to call them now, now that they're wired into the actual core update of Google, um, does it read the words between our optimizations? Now, I'm going to actually record myself actually launching them. And you're there, sort of. Then I'll come back with the, the segment. So where is that test now? Good morning, this is Carolyn Hulsman. I am making an audio recording of the launching of the next two sites in this testing series. Does the helpful content read our content or are they looking at other signals? If so, this test is devised to be a binary choice for Google systems, either It's uh, the words that are on this page. Either it's a related topical entity, phrase, keyword, LSI, whatever you want to use to communicate the topic to Google, or it's lorem ipsum. You know, this is content that looks like words. You use them like words, but unlike real words, these convey literally nothing at all. So that's what helpful content gets to see, either topical words or non-topical non-words, words that have zero semantic meaning, no message. Now, after the first test, which demonstrated that Google only uh, obviously made something with the topical words, that the helpful content rules basically did not find any unhelpful content in the lorem ipsum. That's another way of saying it is that it found it helpful because it didn't find it unhelpful. And the reason I want to stress this point is that there are writers and even SEOs out there that are trying to write helpful content. And frankly, that doesn't exist in the helpful content ecosystem. There is only unhelpful content that can damage a site's performance. And there are multiple ways to earn an unhelpful tag in that system. But I digress. Let's go back to the action at hand. So I'm going to give you the background so you know what I'm doing. These domains were purchased, one for a city of approximately 80,000 and another for a suburb uh, city near a town of about half a million. Both of them have similar search volume for the term rhinoplasty and their city name. Remember, I'm protecting, um, preserving the presence of the site that I built them based on, which was a what appears to be a clone of Kyle Roof's initial test for rhinoplasty Plano. So I made more content clones. <laughs> And I've published these on two new sites and modified the content to be relevant to their respective city names. Now, since we were last together, I made an interesting discovery between test one and these two. 
And there was something very specific that I didn't notice until now. And that is only one of the pages has a meta tag for the description. Why is that interesting, you ask? Well, I know Kyle has always been very deliberate and specific in his testing. But what was interesting is that it's not that easy to accidentally not have meta descriptions in the code on all the other pages and only have it on one. Now this theme has been a bear. However, with a little research and some time with Claude AI, I was able to develop a theme modification that resulted in all of the meta description tags being absent in the source code of every page except for the one that ranked in Kyle's original test. Now, I know I'm saying that I am assuming that the model site that these tests were fashioned after was an exact clone, the same specifications as the one Kyle published. So knowing that, I'm deducing that this spec was in Kyle's original because of what I know about Kyle and how really uh, hard to the almost unbelievable um, odds um, for this to be present and not have been deliberate. You know, for this to have been an accident, it's just like, it, it just couldn't have been. So anyway, now that's done. All right, so now we're ready. Now first, I'm going over here. Um, I have uh, the, the tabs open. Um, first, I'm going to uncheck that little um, uh, thing that says, um, you know, discourage search engines in both of those uh, installations. So that's saved, site two. Now I'm in site three, uncheck, because you know it's so easy to forget to do this. And okay, saved. Now I'm going to put these into a friend's search console. Did I say I'm actually launching sites during a core update? You know, is it really living if we're not taking chances for failure? Okay. Um, all right, so what I have here, I've grabbed the text record for each domain. I'm gonna do it as a, um, in search console, I'm not just gonna do it on the um, secure, URL, I'm going to do it for the whole domain. And I am now, okay, I had, uh, again, two, two things open. So uh, I'm going to paste it in there and save. And okay, so that was easy because I practiced that so that I wouldn't be wasting your time. <laughs> uh, anyway, so listen, I'm going to I'm going to pause and I'm going to come right back because it's going to take a minute or two for those to propagate. And I wanted to just go and let you know what else I'm doing. Okay, hang on. Right. So now things are verified. And, you know, when you first put a domain in, it takes a couple of days before you can start to see the data that's being captured. And I am a big fan of sitemaps and a bigger fan of repeatedly submitting them. I do not wait for Google to work its way back around, especially on a new site, um, to see that things have been published or updated. So, okay, that one, yep, all good. And sometimes you have to uh, refresh it because like it'll say it read it, um, it was submitted on, you know, let's say on one day and it hasn't updated the read yet. So sometimes you have to uh, repeatedly just sort of like refresh that screen and then you'll see that the dates will, will catch up with each other. Okay, now um, that was one. And now this is two, okay. Now the next thing is I'm going to put these URLs into Indexilla, my soon to be released indexer. If you're interested, uh, check out indexilla.org. 
io. Again, that's like index, I-N-D-E-X, Z-I-L-L-A dot, the letter I, the letter O. If you'd like to be part of the beta testing that will start soon, there's a link to a form on that under construction page where you can apply. All right, so now we wait and I'm going to stop now. Okay, this is so devious of me because now um, those sites have, have launched. And technically, I'm still away on my trip. <laughs> but here's why I tested with two more sites. And it isn't like this is a funded project or anything. You know, uh, the answer is fairly straightforward and simple. This is the basics of SEO testing. For instance, how do we know if test one, as it turned out, is actually exactly how Google will do it a second and a third time? You know, is it a real conclusion? It's certainly strong evidence, and um, and I'll share the details of, of everything in shortly in the recurring segment here in a minute. But the question is, is it repeatable? Also, what if the helpful content rules have changed since I launched test number one. You know, there's a timing factor. Google is constantly adjusting and modifying itself. Pretty volatile environment. Um, we're in an update right now. So my question is, you know, what will the evidence show? Tune in next week, same bet time, same bet channel. And now for the recurring segment, where is this test now? Okay, well, as of now, the results of test one are in. The site is ranking, not just ranking in the top 100, right before I left town, it had inched its way to the bottom of page one. So I guess I can say it's in the top 10 for the query. There is no evidence that Lorem Ipsum was unhelpful because if helpful content is reading the words between our topical optimizations, as some suggest, you know, going so far as to actually say there's a way to write helpful content that is nothing to do with SEO optimizations or anything related to topics. You know, if that is true, lorem ipsum is about as far away from helpful as you can get. These words convey nothing. They're, they would never convert. There are no human actions that indicate the content was helpful. Also, let's not forget, helpful content is not just a page level judgment. This is a site level uh, judgment. And in this case, each page on this test site is relevant to the query. They are each topical and they answer questions that one might expect from a collection of pages about the topic of rhinoplasty. So guess how many of these pages are indexed? Don't, I'll tell you because I'm not gonna give you the, the, <laughs> the keyword. All right, all of them. Guess how many pages are being served this week? All of them. Now, that doesn't sound like a helpful content, uh, unhelpful performance. You know, we, we see stuff not getting indexed, or if it was previously indexed and helpful content came along, we see that sort of decline in impressions and everything. So now it's just a matter of I think of seeing if this test one is the exception or the rule when it comes to helpful content reading. And, and yes, I'm using air bunnies, the words between our optimizations. Indexilla is gearing up for the beta testing, which is where we're going to open it up pretty much to everyone. Eh, maybe, maybe less, one less than everyone. How about that? <laughs> in the meantime, you can get into the alpha testing group. 
Um, the only difference is that um, how many people are going to be allowed on the platform. So it's a smaller number in the alpha. And you can get into the testing group right now if you have an account on crawl or no crawl, which is on Substack. And either type of account is fine. And you will find a form that uh, will be in the next email where if you would like to uh, sign up before we close the alpha, you can do that. Now, um, all, the, all the credits are on me during the testing, this testing phase. So um, might be kind of fun. Best of all, you know, like I say, you get an indexer and all of it's on my dime during this alpha stage phase. So um, feedback and my own testing of the system continues to confirm that Google's index is open and open even during this update. And Indexella is getting content indexed, which yay. All right. Well, that's it for me this week. If you need help with your site and you're not sure where to dig, my specialty is forensic SEO, right? It's not what do I need to do to get to page one? It's what's keeping me from being there already. I find the answers in the sites and bring solutions to strengthen them and create more success for you. Now to stay on the cutting edge of the state of indexing as well as, like I said, the uh, access to the new indexer. Uh, this is um, not based on the non-working indexing API that, that a lot of them are built on. Uh, you can check out Crawl or No Crawl on Substack. Thank you for being a listener. If you have questions or comments or topic ideas, you can text me, 512-222-3132. Um, Thanks again, and until next week, I'll see you in the SERPs.